Hello, kidney warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is another episode of Dadvice TV Live. It is Tuesday, I forgot the date, the 23rd of June at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And this is live. So make sure, say hi in the chat. If you have questions along the way, feel free to ask those questions. Now, for those of you, who are new to the show. Whoops, I accidentally hit my microphone. Let me tell you a quick thing about myself and introduce my co-host. I am James. I was diagnosed with kidney failure, mm, given no hope. As a matter of fact, the doctors, they told me it was impossible for me to get better. Well, they were flat out wrong. I worked with my other doctors, my renal dietitian, my endocrinologist, my family doctor who was so instrumental in helping me not need dialysis at stage five. As a matter of fact, I kicked stage five to the curb. Then I got to stage four, kicked into the curb, and now I am full of energy, no symptoms. Stage three and nothing is holding me back. My kidneys, they're still shot. They're still just as bad. They're no better, but I've learned how to live and eat better so that I can kind of live in harmony with my kidneys. I'm not overburdening them and they're keeping up with me pretty well. I mean, look at all this energy I got. Woohoo! To believe I was originally GFR8. Oh, now today in the low 30s, but feeling fantastic. Now, my co host, who's with me? Boom, this is Jen, and Jen is amazingly a renal dietitian and that is what is the key that helped me kick kidney disease to the curb so jen go ahead and introduce yourself to anyone who is new or this is their first time watching us here on youtube thanks james so i'm jen i am a renal dietitian that means i'm a registered dietitian and i specialize in renal or kidney nutrition I am board certified in renal nutrition, meaning I've gone through thousands of hours in helping people just like you with kidney health, kidney nutrition issues. And then I took a test to prove that I knew what I was talking about and that I could actually help people in a safe and effective way. And that gives me some extra letters behind my name. And most importantly, the confidence and the knowledge in being able to help people just like you with kidney issues to take care of all the different nutrition challenges that you all know that we come across sodium phosphorus potassium anemia fluids all different kinds of things and we address these things one-on-one -on -one. i do see clients privately in a virtual setting just like this one-on-one -on -one for people that are living in the u.s for people that are in the US and international, I do offer a group program, my Plant Powered Kidneys group. And uh, you'll have to stay tuned and just kind of keep your eyes peeled because I have some really special announcements that will be coming up uh, in the very near future. If you are in my Facebook group, if you are coming across my website, getting information there, you might already know what I'm talking about. So we'll just have to keep paying attention to hear what I'm going to be sharing with you all this time next week. Awesome. Whoops. Uh oh, let me turn you on your camera right here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we, this is live. I forgot to test all the different camera settings and missed <laughs> one of them. All right, so right here, just below me on the bottom of the screen, you will see the link to Jen's Facebook group. If you have not joined that already, when this is over, go over there and join. There's all sorts of great information, including my favorite thing, Jen cooks on video. She shows you how to make all sorts of great things that are kidney friendly and she talks about it, why you pick certain things, adds a little flavor, adds a different texture, gets you a little bit of crunch and stuff like that. This is all free and the more you know about kidney disease and what to eat and what not to do and what to do, and you can do a lot, the better your life is. You're gonna, you're not gonna be held back by kidney disease. You're gonna do what I'm doing. You're gonna kick kidney disease to the curb. Now today, whew, we got us a busy show and we have an awesome topic. Um, you know, it's, it's something we all do. We all eat fast food. And then when you got diagnosed with kidney disease, 
you probably thought, oh no, no more Burger King, no more McDonald's, no more fast food ever again. No, that's not, that's not the way it is. Now, it's, you can't go out to Burger King and grab the two for five when they got their Whoppers on sale and gobble them both down, but there are things, and we're going to talk about those, you can eat at all the popular fast food joints, and we're going to talk about some tips to help you if it's someplace new that we don't cover, not a specific brand, how can you navigate that menu? What should you be doing? But fast food, it, it's not every meal. You can't be going to McDonald's every day and eating there, but you can make it an occasional trip or occasional treat. You're out, you're working, you're going to lunch. You want to grab something fast. We're going to talk about what you can do. Now, before we get too much further, I do have a couple announcements to make. First of all, I'm kicking off a newsletter. Boom, right up there, there's the link. Make sure you guys subscribe to the newsletter. If you go to dadvicetv.com, there's a link to get to it, or you can go to this URL, go.dadvicetv.com slash newsletter. Go ahead and sign up. It's a monthly newsletter dedicated to kidney health. Some of Jen's recipes are gonna be in there, articles from her, um, other articles from other people, um, interesting links of things that I read that's like, hey, we all need to know about this. Uh, all sorts of great stuff and it's free. So sign up, it only comes out once a month. And I partnered with Kibo Biotech, the makers of Renadil, and practically all of you out there, you know Renadil, love the stuff, it's done so much to help me reduce the burning while working with my diet to help my kidneys. Um, partnered with them, they're actually doing all the heavy lifting for the newsletter, which is fantastic, because I just couldn't fit it into my schedule. But they said, James, we're gonna make it happen. We'll do it for you. Let's work together. And they work with Jen and other renal dietitians. So we got all this great information. So make sure and sign up. One more thing before we jump right into fast food. I have a special message. So Ray, who's actually in the audience right now, hey there, Ray, he has a mom who is a kidney warrior and Ray has been attending every single one of these shows, learning all about kidney disease and how to help his mom be as strong as she can as she's battling kidney disease. And guess what? This week, I think it's tomorrow as a matter of fact, it's her birthday. So let's all wish happy birthday to Muriel. Hey there, Muriel. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> she lives over in the UK, so she's watching live. It's pretty late over there, but I wanted to make sure. Ah, oh, he. <laughs> Ray says hi. Uh, I wanted to make sure it's a happy birthday to her. Uh, she's so sweet, and Ray is so awesome at helping her. All right, Jen. Now let's jump in to the topic: fast food. So, um, when it comes, or actually, I want everyone out there. Let's 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 do some surveys. We're gonna we're gonna make this very interactive. Tell me in the comments. Oh, and hey, uh, Muriel, people are saying happy birthday to you. I'm gonna get these up on the screen so that you can see that. Look at all this, these kidney warriors showing their love, saying happy birthday. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, okay, I want everyone out there, tell me uh, what is your favorite fast food and do you still go there or did you just uh, put on the brakes and say, I can't go there because of my kidneys? Tell us in the comment, where did you go? And did you, do you still go there? And if you still go there, what do you usually order when you are there? Now, while they're doing that, because there is a little bit of a delay, <laughs> so I'm gonna give people time to put all that in there. Um, Jen, what are the problems we got to watch out for when we we go fast food why can't i just drive to mcdonald's and order what i want off the menu well this is a great place to start because we know that there's a lot of issues when it comes to fast food but what we here really want to focus on are what are the problems related to kidney issues with fast food and some of them are very obvious and some of them not so much the number one issue that I have when it comes to fast food and why we say be careful with how often you go and what you choose, how much you choose, is sodium. 
fast food is very, very high in sodium. And mm-hmm. you can easily get an entire day's worth of sodium in just one drive through stop. So you really want to be aware of the sodium content in your foods. And even sodas and soft drinks have sodium in them. So it can add up really, really fast when we're going through that drive through So sodium is the number one first issue that I would say makes the biggest difference when it comes to a kidney-friendly diet because whether or not your kidney issues have been caused by blood pressure issues or anything else, the kidneys are responsible for controlling our blood pressure. And us eating a diet high in salt is not going to help that situation. And if you have kidney issues, it can lead to uncontrolled blood pressure, a higher risk of heart attack, strokes, and other cardiovascular issues. So this is something we really just need to pay attention to and be really careful about. So number one thing to be careful of is sodium. And what is the next thing? I know the next one is something that gets added to a lot of food. And when it's an additive, we absorb it like crazy. Um, And it's better when we get the natural source. What is that one? Yeah. So the next one is phosphorus additives or phosphate additives. Now, people outside of the kidney world probably aren't aware of phosphorus in their diet, but between you and me, kidney warriors, you know that phosphorus is something that you need to be aware of and pay attention to. Now, the phosphorus that is added to foods is serving is serving as a preservative. And this is the kind that is absorbed 90 to 100% into your bloodstream, which means it makes the biggest impact on your phosphorus levels in your blood. Typically, people with kidney issues tend to have a higher phosphorus level. Some exceptions can include people who have transplants that they're, uh, they might run lower and they might not have that same restriction. Again, this is one of those situations where it's different for everybody, so we can't just say one thing overall. But for the majority of people, a high phosphorus is a big problem. And restaurants and fast food companies, they are in the business of selling food. And in order to do that, they have to make sure their food supply, their food sources aren't going to go bad fast. So they have more preservatives typically found in their food. And this can often Uh, this can often include phosphorus or phosphate additives. So this is something that you want to be careful of because even if you have a phosphorus level that's even in control, even just going above 3.5 in your blood tests can put you at higher risk of further damaging your kidneys and increasing your risk of death because a high phosphorus level can lead to a higher risk of heart attack and stroke. So it's very, very serious to pay attention to and be aware of. The biggest challenge, though, is that phosphorus is not required to be listed on labels. And there's a difference. Oh, between the I know. I didn't I know. know that. That's awful. Yeah. So that's the challenge that we have and, and that you as kidney warriors have is that you have to do some digging and you have to really look into what it is that you're eating because it's not going to be right there front and center for you. You have to play detective and you have to look into this. So I do have a recommendation on how you can a little bit more easily look for phosphorus uh, in your foods, especially when it comes to restaurants. And what is that? So the trick is (laughs) you want to look up the restaurants online. You want to look up their nutrition information. And it's not just the nutrition facts. I'm not talking about calories and fat and protein and carbs. I'm talking about the ingredients. And Mm -hmm. one of the things you can do is look up maybe a food allergy list because they do list the ingredients Mm -hmm. and the allergens. So if you find the allergen list, you might be able to find the full ingredient list. And the ingredients is what you really want to focus on because those phosphate additives are going to be listed as an ingredient. And when you do get that list, when you do see all of the foods and all of the ingredients, you hit control F and I think it's command F. I should know this. I have a Mac. I think control F F on Windows, (laughs) command F on a Mac for search. There we go. So you do that and that opens up a search bar for you and you just type in P H O S. And your computer is automatically going to search that all those texts, all those words, and look for anything that has FOSS in it. 
And that is how you can easily go through and find all the ingredients, all of the sources in the restaurant that have phosphate additives. Yep. And phosphorus is in so many different forms. So if you guys are looking for it and you see it once, that may not be the only time. So when you do that search, it'll say like one of eight or something, however many times it's on there. It could be on there a lot because they need that food to last. And and you guys have all probably seen those videos of the, the, the burger from one of the big joints with the clown that's like 10 years old and it looks brand new. That's those additives in there, preservatives and phosphorus and all that, keeping it unnaturally from rotting. Oh, mm -hmm. it's not good for our kidneys. Mm. But that right yeah. there is a great tip looking up allergens. I didn't even yes. think about that because all the big, the big places, McDonald's, Starbucks, Burger King, they usually have something online that you can go and you can look at. Um, or they have some printout that you can ask for when you're there, but it's great to go online and pre-plan what you want. But I never thought about looking at the allergies, which will also include more of the ingredients. Ah, fantastic mm -hmm. tip. Yeah, it was something I had done when I worked in dialysis and I actually created a big binder for all of uh, my dialysis patients. And I went through, printed up all those nutrition labels or all those ingredient lists, and I highlighted all of the FOSS. And I use that as part of an education tool to teach them how to find foods that are okay for them and what to really watch out for and avoid, especially when it comes to that phosphorus. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, then I'm going to try to switch our, our screens around because we're on the wrong sides on the screen. <laughs> oh. So it looks like I'm looking away from you instead of at you when I look at you. <laughs> I'm going to try to fix that. But what about... So I know that for some people, you know, they got to really watch phosphorus. They really got to watch potassium and it's more than just limiting it. They got to watch it so close that just regular food might have a bit too much and they take a medication for that. Can you talk about that? And, you know, is that something that you, if your doctor prescribes, you should do before going and eating fast food? Yeah, so uh, there is a type of medication called a phosphate or phosphorus binder. And this is something that your doctor will generally prescribe to help keep your phosphorus controlled. The way that this medication, that this category of medication works is you take it with your food and it basically acts like a sponge that picks up and grabs and holds the phosphorus from your food. So it's really, really important that you follow that prescription that your doctor has set for you in relation to controlling your phosphorus. And really super important when you go out to eat because if you haven't already, you look up that nutrition and information uh, about the ingredients and you see all the phosphorus is there, it adds up fast. And even though it's not listed as a primary ingredient, it's absorbed 90 to 100%. Mm -hmm. It makes a really big difference. So yeah. take that medication to absorb the phosphorus, prevent it from getting into your bloodstream to keep your phosphorus levels controlled. All right, so let's go to the beginning. And lots of great comments, people. Um, I'm getting me hungry. You guys are talking about what you like to eat there. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh yeah, I like uh, that too. That one I don't get, that I do get. Oh. This is a bad question for us right before we're going to have our next meal. <laughs> I know. I, I eat dinner. This is the one day of the week where I eat late. I eat my dinner after the show. And you and I, we talk for about half an hour, 45 minutes after the show and kind of plan future shows. So <laughs> this is really getting me hungry. Uh, yeah. But maybe I'll go out to eat tonight instead of cooking. I do have there lots of go. veggies for my stir fry, but maybe I'll go out to eat. But speaking of going out to eat, how often is it kind of okay for kidney patients to go out and have fast food? Um, I think that it's generally going to be something that you want to plan for. And I say plan because we need to be realistic. If we try to say, I'm never going to do this, it's never going to happen, that's, that's not realistic. That's not real life. So... In general, once, maybe twice a week could be something that's realistic. And if you plan it into your weekly schedule, it's something that you 
will know is not so off limits. And this, uh, this mentality, I mean, if you think about taking away a toy from a kid, oh. they're only going to want the toy. That's all they want. Right. Exactly. Until you back to them. So it's the same concept. We're not taking the toy away from you. We're telling you, you can play with it just for a limited amount of time. So we really want to make sure that that's something that we can do in a safe and healthy way. So I think once, twice a week is realistic. If you find yourself eating out more often than that, it might be a good starting point for you to start looking at ways that you can cut back on eating out because it can make a huge significant improvement on your health and your labs to not eat out as frequently. Yeah, and after I was initially diagnosed, I cut eating out um, to, to zero. You know, um, I, I think I went and ate at a local mall with my parents and some other relatives a Saturday after I got out on a Thursday. And that was probably one of the last times. Um, and then when I did go out, I always picked someplace a salad bar because it was mm -hmm. so easy for me to find the right things in the salad, lots of veggies and different variety and get me a vinaigrette. But now those... Uh, they're not, not available so for us. Yeah, no. exactly. No. So let's start diving in to some of the fast food places. I know you guys are eager to hear this. And a lot of you talked about one of the, one of the ones I want to talk about first, burger joints. Can we make a hamburger fit in our diet? Now I know it's not plant-based and you know, we don't always have to be plant-based, I am almost all plant-based. It has been so helpful for me. Um, and I encourage everyone, if you're not even trying to at least do, you know, 80% or so plant-based, do it. It's good for your kidneys. Future you will be so excited you do that today. But uh, can we make a burger fit? Let's start there. Well, I definitely think I would be inhumane if I said you couldn't. <laughs> so... <laughs> There's tons of different burger options that are out there now. What I recommend to really keep it kidney friendly is for one, just stick to a regular sized hamburger. Let's not look at the double, triples, mega monsters, whatever kind of burger. No Carl's I, Jr. then. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The ones that are, that are just like so obnoxiously big that you think, wow, I sure did get a lot for my money, but my heart's getting a lot of cholesterol and salt and fat from this too. So <laughs> just keep it to a regular portion. So a, a four ounce burger, that's going to be about the size of the deck of cards or the palm of your hand. Exactly. There so we just go. this big. Okay. That's all your body really needs. And in fact, in some cases with kidney issues, you might need even less protein than that. So that's another thing to just be aware of um, is that you might not need as much protein as you think. There's a whole other category of people on dialysis who need more protein. Arguably, it's not as much as they think. Even the four ounces is recommended. So mm -hmm. even people who are on dialysis and have higher protein needs, a four ounce burger will still be plenty for them. So now what about, really, oh, go ahead. No, go for it. I was going to say, what about topping? So I got my four ounce burger and I know what I do. I do occasionally have a burger and the people, I used to go to Wendy's. It's great value and it's easy to get to. And what I do, and let me know if you agree with this and maybe you don't, I'm sure you will this one. I get extra, extra, extra lettuce. <laughs> I need lots of lettuce on it. Um, I, I love onions. Um, I might get one slice of tomato, but I load up on like the lettuce. Um, I don't get cheese. If I do get cheese, which is very rare, I will get Swiss cheese if they offer it. Most places don't just because it's much lower in sodium and stuff like that. But I just, I kind of make up my value. I don't get the, the mayo. I don't get the ketchup. Um, I sometimes might get a little bit of mustard, um, but I load up on lettuce on there and onions. Um, I'm pretty light on the pickles because those are just taking a bath and swimming in sodium. Um, yeah. But what are your recommendations for toppings? I think you have a great plan, James. Anytime that you can add a ton of veggies 
to your burger, it's going to feel even more satisfying. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really what it's all about is for it to look and feel really satisfying when it comes to our burger order. If you want to get extra condiments, if you want to get ketchup, mayonnaise, mustard, even the relish, I would recommend asking for the to-go packets, which I think some places are doing now anyway. Yeah. Um, but this is going to help with a little bit more of the portion control ketchup. I mean, I'm like a ketchup soup girl. I will have it as a main <laughs> dish because I love. <laughs> hey, I love hey that's my kids. So they like yeah. French fries with their ketchup. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's ketchup with the French fries, the, the exactly. side of French fries. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say ketchup is a tomato based product. So mm -hmm. that potassium can add up really, really quickly if you, you know, do what I do and have a bowl of it basically. Yeah. So and there's a careful. lot of sugar in some of them. Yes. Yes. If you've ever tried the no sugar added ketchups, there's a huge difference. Yeah. My husband was not a fan at all. Oh. Of the no sugar. So I used to live in Germany. Hey, we got someone watching from Germany. I used to live in Germany in the 80s. My dad's retired Air Force. And a lot of the ketchup there was sugar-free. And I got to where I actually love that taste and prefer it to the traditional high sugar ketchup. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice all mix in. But I, I don't do it anymore because I, I don't keep this around the house, but I would mix in just a tad of beer into the ketchup <laughs> and it gives it a different taste. <laughs> is that a Germany thing too? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you my age when I was there. I was pretty young, <laughs> but I had friends. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> who had well, dads who looked the other way. Great yeah. Yeah. Um, and I do like that you skip the cheese too. I think oh, that yeah. that's really helpful because the cheese, especially fast food, sometimes it really doesn't pass as actual cheese, right? Exactly. It's, it's just oils and stuff yeah. and all sorts yeah. of chemicals. And salt. Yeah. It's a lot of salt. I mean, a slice of cheese can have just as much salt, if not more, than a piece of bread. Yeah. And, and when you go fast food, that cheese they give you, besides not really being real, it's not a full slice. And anyone yeah. who has ever been to McDonald's and got a filet of fish you know, when you pull that bun off, you're like, what the heck? Where's the other half of my cheese? It's not that much, but it's just all chemicals. Mm -hmm. so, so kind of speaking of McDonald's, so we can, you know, we talked about how to get, get a burger. Number one burger joint when it comes to fast food is McDonald's. Tons of people said they like McDonald's. You know, that's one of their fast foods. Um, so I drive out to McDonald's. I'm going to the drive-thru. What should I order? And I can well, get a I, burger. What yeah. else? Or, or how, which I mean, burger do you recommend and all? Just the classic hamburger. And of course it looks so dinky compared to all their other giant mega double triple burgers. But just the classic burger is a good option. Mm -hmm. I think another great option that you had mentioned is the filet of fish Ooh. So that one I think is a good option, especially without the cheese. But you can do the tartar sauce. I'm not cruel. So you can do the tartar sauce, <laughs> and that's still going to be a pretty decent option. Uh, one thing I would say be careful of, though, is their uh, chicken. Their chicken sandwich has a lot of added phosphates, mm -hmm. and it has a lot of sodium as well. So be really, really careful with some of these things. McDonald's, we know it's not the healthiest place, but what I do love is that they have a great nutrition calculator on their website, and they have all of their ingredients listed out. So it makes it really helpful and easier for you to just look it up online and get an idea of what would work for you. Yep, and I do love filet of fish We had several people mention filet of fish So look at that. That's an option for you. Just pass on that little tiny sliver of cheese they throw in there that's not even real. Yeah. <laughs> Won't even miss it. Exactly. To me, it, it's the tartar sauce and the bun. The, they use a different bun for the filet of fish. Um, a, a kind of a tip for you guys, you can order the regular burger and ask for the filet of fish bun. It's a lot softer. I like it a lot better. So go ahead and customize it. Then you also know it wasn't sitting under the, the heat lamps all day. Yeah, that's true. And when you think of, you know, a lot of times we think of, of fast food like McDonald's, we think, oh, I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to go for the chicken. But, but that's not always, or that it's not the best choice. Loaded up with 
phosphorus. And I just pulled it up right now. Um, and I see phosphorus three times in the ingredients, three different forms of mm -hmm. phosphorus, the kind that are artificial being added that we are going to absorb 90 to 100% of. Mm, not good. Yeah, yeah. phosphorus, it's, 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 it, I call it a sneaky snake. It's kind of that Southern in me. Um, it's a sneaky snake. <laughs> um, it seems to be all cool. over the place. You gotta keep an eye out for yeah. it. But you yeah. look for that, that PHOS that gives it away. They have all those other long chemical names for it, but that PHOS always stands out. What else besides um, those sandwiches do you recommend at McDonald's? Well, I think the side salad is a nice, simple, easy garden salad that you can do. And I even checked their dressings. Last I checked, all of their dressings are kidney safe. So no potassium, no phosphate additives. Uh, I think that that makes it really easy to do a side salad and even use some of the dressing on the sandwich if you want. Yep, uh, very and then good. The apple slices are always a great go-to. My kids absolutely love McDonald's apple slices. And guys, they're only 50 cents for a bag. So get yourself two or three and then get some for the kids. They love them. And they're great yeah. in the car. They don't get lost like French fries. Yeah. I mean, speaking of French fries, if you wanted to do French fries, if you were like, I, I can't not, I mean, that's up to you. But I will warn you that they are high in sodium and a small order of fries has a 700 milligrams of potassium, and that's 15 oh. percent. So a small order of fries is already going to take up a lot of your potassium if you are on a potassium restriction, and it's also adding a couple hundred milligrams of sodium too. So just keep that in mind if you do decide to do that because there's a price to pay with it, and it's not just the, I don't know, dollar 79. I don't know how much fries cost. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anymore either. In fact, I skip on the fries. That's awesome. I just don't feel good after I eat the fries. It's just got yeah. that, 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 even if you get them with no salt, that still got that greasy feeling. And then you've know, got all the other stuff in there. Uh, yeah, we had, we had Ray who said next time he goes to McDonald's, he's going to get filet of fish, a side salad, and he's going to drink water. That's um, a great idea, Ray. Yeah, and I say yay, yay, yay to the drinking water, though there are other options. Um, I would then go, for me, um, I will sometimes, when I have fast food, it's when I'm driving. Like I, I, I do a lot of work in Chicago. So I drive up to Chicago, it takes me like six and a half hours to get there. And I'll go through a McDonald's and I'll get a coffee. I just get the regular coffee. Because there's the chemicals, there's phosphorus, there's sugar, and all those additives, and who knows what else is in there. I will sometimes get like an iced tea. I get the unsweetened, just because you know I still got a lot of weight to lose, and I don't need all that extra sugar. Um, I don't drink any of the sodas, though I know I could have like a Sprite or a 7-Up. And there are some root beers that don't have phosphorus, but you don't have the label, so you can't read them. So I just pretty much avoid all sodas. Um, it's been so long since I've had a soda, I could not imagine drinking a carbonated beverage right now. I'd probably look pretty weird, all the bubbles, <laughs> getting used to it again. <laughs> yeah. But what do you well, think of those? those are all those? really good options. Awesome. Very yeah, good. Yeah, I think those are all great. So next to, Bur or next to McDonald's, there's always a Burger King, and we had people in here talk about Burger King. And Burger King has a fairly similar menu, so it makes it pretty easy to kind of say, hey, this is what I'm going to go for. But they have one special thing that they promote a lot, and boy, does it sound healthy. I know the secret, or I know the truth, and I've had a, a bite of one, and they... They call it the Impossible Burger. It's a plant-based Whopper. They claim it tastes just like a Whopper, and you couldn't be fooled. They're wrong. That's all marketing. <laughs> I had one bite of it, and I was like, mm-mm. And I knew there, it's got a very nasty secret, most of those plant-based ones. They're loaded. Yeah. You want to say what they're loaded with? Well, it's the sodium, you guys. Yes. It's, it's, 
it's shocking so and annoying, honestly. How more much sodium, sodium than a there. regular burger, too? Yeah, I, oh. it just it blows my mind. Um, oh, I get this question a lot. People all the time, my clients, and I get messages about it. You know, what about the plant-based burgers? Um, can I do that instead? There's a trade-off, and that trade-off is you're going to have upwards of like double the sodium just from that one swap, and I don't think it's worth it. It's, it's, it's not. not providing any other benefits. It's still a good chunk of it is saturated fat, and it mm -hmm. comes from coconut, but it's still saturated fat, which we know is not heart healthy, so not good for our cardiovascular system. So it, I, I, there's no benefit in doing and. and I want to just say that, how do I want to say this? There's no justification and there's, there's this health halo that's over these plant-based burgers and it's not really true. When we talk about the kidney world, okay, because this is all related to kidney health, I'm not seeing benefits because of the sodium and the mm -hmm. additives and things that are in there that just aren't doing you any good. It's not worth it. And I just pulled up how much sodium is in the impossible whopper you guys take a guess take a guess post it in the comments let's see who gets the closest it is unbelievable as a matter of fact when i got out of the hospital stage five oh my feet i couldn't get them into my shoes because of all the swelling from the fluid retention so i was on an extremely low sodium diet my entire Days worth of sodium, almost every bit of it is in this one burger. And it doesn't taste that great. It doesn't fill you that up. Okay, I see someone saying pretty close. We got us a 975. I just looked up and it tells me 1,080. Woo, and 420 milligrams of sodium is just in the bun. Mmm. Yeah, that that alone is is worth the pass. There is a lot or there's there's not a lot. There is less sodium in a regular Whopper. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe even calories. OK, I'm not going to go doing all the comparison because we got a lot of other restaurants to talk about and types of food. But yeah, yeah I, I mean, you obviously we can dive deep into each of these <laughs> things and just really pick it apart because it is astounding, really. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. So now I don't eat McDonald's very often or, uh, Burger King. I actually don't eat burgers. It's been so long since I've had a burger and I've had a few of them the last year and a half. Um, but I do go out a lot to Asian. I have a great place if they're watching, um, Asian walk, Mason Montgomery road, over there next to Kroger in Mason, Ohio. Awesome people there. They will customize anything for him, which is fantastic. He'll make all sorts of veggies for me, which is usually what I eat. But what about eating like Chinese food and other Asian food? Well, there can be some really great options. Like you said, I mean, you said yourself, James, stir fry is a great go-to for yourself. But again, the challenge, we have to think back to that first thing we talked about, what we need to watch out for for fast food and it's sodium and restaurants across the board will add sodium to their foods. So you can make a very, very similar thing at home with a significantly lower amount of sodium. I'm saying like 10% of the sodium that they have. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the biggest issue, but really pay attention to uh, the serving sizes. Oftentimes in like Chinese restaurants, it's all family style, right? Yeah. So it's very difficult to measure out portions and get an idea for how much it is. You can look up the nutrition and it will tell you per serving, but they're not giving you a serving. They're giving but, you a platter. And you get the, if you get it to go, you get those little boxes. I, I don't know. There's like a portal or something in there, a wormhole. It just holds so much more. When I, if I open it up and I pour it out, there's no way it looks impossible to get it back into the box. It's like more food came out than fits in those little boxes. And yeah. you might think, oh, that box is a serving, but it's not. That could be two, three, actually maybe even more, you know, like three and a half, four servings in that little teeny box. So don't let that box fool you when you order it to go. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I, um, when I was looking into some of these options, I was looking at Panda Express because that Mm -hmm. is a very, very common place to go to and it's quick and it's easy and, you know, just very accessible. They do have a really great nutrition calculator on their website. So you can go there and you can try things out. But the bad news I had for them when I was looking into it is basically everything they have has added phosphorus. I don't, I don't think I need to think back. Um, the, the teriyaki grilled chicken. Correct. That's what I get. The only thing. Yeah. The only thing that didn't have added phosphates, but it was very, very high in sodium. Yeah. That the sauce and they put, you can get the sauce on the side, which is a good thing. You you know, um, the people there are always really friendly. I get the teriyaki chicken. I get the sauce on the side and I use a fraction. I actually don't pour it onto my chicken. I dip Mm -hmm. the chicken and kind of shake it and eat it. Um, just because there's so much like sodium and other stuff in that sauce. Absolutely. Yeah. I love Panda Express. Every, every Panda Express around here, they all know me when I come in. They're like, Oh, he's the kidney guy. (laughs) (laughs) and for my side whenever i go there they have the steamed veggies which i i love um now they recently added kale to it i picked that out uh just because it's so powerful the way they cook it there um but i love to get the steamed veggies get the grilled chicken breast on top and it's just grilled chicken breast and then i get the sauce which has all the sodium and everything else on the side and just dip into it well, even the chicken itself has a lot of sodium because they usually inject it with a sodium yeah, solution. Pump it up. Yeah, it's it's not really great when you think about all the processing that it goes through, um, but that's what they have to do to keep it lasting longer. Yeah. Now, what about rice at Panda Express? They had the fried rice, they had the white rice, and and they have brown rice. Okay to I go with any of those. Rice, I think the brown rice is great. Um, it is a whole grain. And they steam it so it's low in sodium. It pretty much adds like no sodium at all. And that's going to give you a lot of fiber and help it be a more filling meal for you. Mm -hmm. Doing either the other rice or the noodles, it's not going to be as filling because there's no fiber to it. But it's a really, really high sodium option. So for me, a solid win there is the brown rice. Now, I just remembered. So whenever I order Asian... There's one thing my kids are like, dad, 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 we got to get these. It's an appetizer. My favorite thing. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I end up ordering two orders of it once just for me. And I shouldn't be eating the whole order. The, the cream cheese ragoons. How about those? I think those are okay. I found that they are uh, phosphate free. So something like that, especially when we're talking about being careful with a lot of the other entrees and options that they have. I mean, you got to have something. So I think something like that would be okay. And cream cheese, we know for a long time, is generally kidney safe, kidney friendly. I remember that came across a lot of my education tools for people on dialysis. So uh, I, I don't have many issues with that when we're looking at everything comparing for uh, for Panda. Yeah. Now, Daniel here just mentioned, he's always been told, and I've heard this many times, other people tell me it too, they've always been told, stay away from brown rice. But I eat brown rice. I like the extra fiber because fiber, I mean, when you have kidney problems, there's so much that fiber helps us with. It helps get stuff, less stuff we absorb that's bad. Um, we need fiber. Um, anything to say to Daniel you know, about brown rice and why maybe some people are being told it's bad. Is it a myth or, and I'm putting you on the spot here with this one. (laughs) No, no, this is great. Um, We used to think, and I say we as an even dietitians, you know, there used to be a thought that the whole grains were not a good option for people with kidney issues because of the higher uh, phosphate content, but it's natural organic phosphorus that's not absorbed by the kidneys. And James, just like you said, it's that fiber. There's a lot of nutrition in the whole grains and brown rice that you otherwise wouldn't get. So it's old, old news. Old news is the avoid the whole grains and have white 
because we know that you're just skipping out on a lot of good things. Yep. And then Jean asks, what about wild rice? Same thing for wild rice. That is a great option. And when we do talk about a kidney friendly diet, having those healthier carbs, I mean, the more options you have, the more variety you get and the happier you're going to be about your diet. Exactly. Variety. We don't want to get ourselves stuck in the, like we're, we're a horse with our blinders that these mm -hmm. few things are the only things we can eat. We need that variety so that we love looking forward to our meals. We love going out with our friends and our family and, and you know, at Thanksgiving or other events and enjoying going out to not being afraid of the food that we eat. Oh, here's one more. Mm -hmm. I get asked this one quite often. I, I see it a lot in the comments. Bulgur wheat, and I, I'm assuming I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly. As far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think bulgur is another really, really great option. It's a whole grain. Uh, so absolutely, I think that is another good whole grain to choose from when we're looking at variety. Very good. So let's move on to another type of fast food. Uh, I want to make sure we get through so many of these. Uh, coffee shops. A lot of people in here mention Starbucks. And it's kind of, you know, I lived in Seattle. I moved out here to Cincinnati. When I was in Seattle, when I moved there, I never drank coffee then all of a sudden I was drinking so many coffees every single day and I felt like I couldn't live without coffee. What about those of us who, you know, we got to have our morning coffee. We got to have our pick me up afternoon coffee and we're going and getting it from fast food. Are we doing a disservice to ourselves or are we okay if we order it right? Well, as we've talked about before, James, even last week, that was a part of the conversation that we had was, is coffee okay? Yes, absolutely. You can have coffee if you have kidney issues. It's all about the amount, right? That's what makes yep. the difference, portions. So the thing about the coffee shop orders is all of their fancy and expensive drinks are the ones that are not really the best choices for us for day to day. Now, every now and then, if you wanted to make a, you know, a special order drink or something or, or to pick that up, I don't think that's going to be the end of the world, but if you're doing it on a consistent basis, day after day, if you pick up a habit of, if you are going to go get coffee before you pick up the kids from school and you're doing that five days a week, that kind of habit can create a bigger problem. So for one, I would say, look at making a few tweaks to that drink. If you're not ready to give up your um, vanilla latte, Try just doing sugar-free vanilla and see if you can do that for a little while. And then try cutting back on the number of uh, pumps of syrup. Mm -hmm. See if you can cut down on that and kind of wean yourself away from that because the sugar can add up really, really fast in those drinks and oftentimes they're even higher than the daily recommended amount of sugar just in one drink, even the smallest drink. That, that used to be me back in the day. I'd go in there and I'd get a venti, the tallest, caramel macchiato and I didn't say extra caramel I said extra extra caramel so they got me three full pumps of sugar sweetness <laughs> in that coffee and I would drink it and at the very end you had like this much of the cup like an inch of the cup just pretty much liquid sugar Syrup, yeah yeah <laughs> And it, it all went to my waist. Oh, I, I can only imagine how many pounds I gained over the 10 years I lived there drinking several of those every day. Now, Starbucks yeah. has more than just drinks. They got, you know, they got snacks and there's like sandwiches and things like that. Any of those that might be a better, a good choice for us when we're, you know, we're a little hungry um, and we want something to go with our coffee? Yeah, so... Uh, for one, so one of my favorite things is the spinach feta egg white wrap. And I, there's no additives in that. The only thing is that you want to be careful with the sodium because it is a saltier thing. So it's a 830 milligrams of sodium in just that one wrap. Mm. Uh, another option I think that's good is the sprouted grain vegan bagel. And that gives you a good amount of protein, a great amount of fiber, and it's pretty good with sodium, uh, 490 milligrams. So, you know, that's really not bad when you're looking at a whole bagel. And yeah. then adding that. And I just saw it's, it's seven friendly. grams of fiber. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. really going to help fill you up. Yeah. And keep you full longer. That's, that's why I love fiber. It, I can eat it. Yeah. And I'm not snacking constantly, especially now that so many of us are at home work and it's so easy to snack. 
fiber helps keep you full longer. They need mm-hmm. a commercial like that got milk, got fiber. <laughs> yeah, they really do. But there's no fiber company because it's just natural, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else can we maybe get? So those those are two good things that probably take care of breakfast, the bagel and the wrap. Um, any lunch mm-hmm. items that are there that are good to recommend? Uh, the tomato mozzarella sandwich is a good option. Still a little bit higher in sodium. Again, we can't always get around for that. So I, I'm thinking of like the, you know, the best option that is available. I like that one because it does give you plenty of protein, but it's not terrible with sodium. It's 580 milligrams. And mozzarella as a soft cheese is a little bit lower in phosphorus than hard cheese. So it's not a terrible, uh, it's not a terrible choice when we're looking at some of these options. Oh, and then that... they have their snack boxes, which are a really, really great way to just kind of get something that you need to munch on to fill you up for a little while until you can get back home to a real uh, bigger meal, more satisfying meal. Yeah, when you mentioned mozzarella, oh, that was my favorite cheese back in the day, especially mm-hmm. in the stick form, deep fried, <laughs> <laughs> breaded. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I could ruin anything good. I'm, I'm a Southern boy. You deep fry it. Mm, it's delicious. Got a piece of bread, deep fry it. Got me a hush puppy. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> All right. What about, okay, so let's, let's move on to a different type of fast food joint. Uh, sandwiches. I mm-hmm. probably, I first one that comes to mind is Subway. Matter of fact, that's mm-hmm. where my wife used to work. Subway's corporate headquarters. Um, she used to, she got to meet Fred DeLuca a number of times before he passed away. Um, what, what about those? What, you know, is that a, we all think of Subway as healthy and they try to portray mm-hmm. themselves that way. But then sometimes there's some controversy about, is it really turkey? Is it really chicken? You know, how processed is some of the stuff and ingredients and stuff like that. Um, what are your thoughts on sandwich shops and then is Subway a good choice? Well, I think that they do have some good options. The deli meats, I'm really, really hesitant about because deli meats are very, very commonly processed with added phosphorus. So uh, in Subway's case, they do a veggie sandwich, which I think is a great option. And I love that they offer things like avocado. They add the vinegar and oils Mm -hmm. to uh, and black pepper, things like that to add more flavor to it without adding salt. And you can really load up on all those vegetables and oh, yeah. get that flavor in there. And it's a very, very satisfying sandwich because of the different textures and tastes and flavors that you get. One thing I would say be careful of, though, is their wraps. Be really careful with those because those tortillas are super high in sodium and they almost always have added phosphates. So the wraps I don't recommend do the uh, nine grain wheat, again, a wheat, a whole wheat product, a, yep. a, a whole grain is going to be a really, really good option for you. Yeah, and I'll tell you, whenever I go there, of course I get the lettuce, but I heavy, heavy up on cucumber. I just absolutely love cucumber. I like the crunch. Um, and it, the cucumbers, they just add so much to it that I really feel like I'm getting a good amount out of it. Um, so what about today is Tuesday and I am surprised. I did see a few responses, but nobody mentioned taco Tuesday. Come on. Oh. <laughs> I, I used to never miss a taco Tuesday. My wife always got the fish tacos and I just got tons and tons of, I know they're the wrong tacos, the hard shell tacos. Mm. There was a date boy. Let me tell you something. If I should have been a, an, one of those like champion eaters or something like that, <laughs> I could have ate a 10 pack of tacos easily while you're just sitting there <laughs> down in one or two of them. I used to love those. <laughs> so what about ordering, you know, food that's, you know, more Mexican style and, you know, particularly uh, fast food being Taco Bell. Well, I kind of have a soft spot for Taco Bell because awesome. they do 
<laughs> they do a great job of having dietitians on their team. So oh. they have registered dietitians that are looking at ways to make foods really healthy and good options. So personally, that's my own little bias because of that. And I love their nutrition calculator. Their uh, information on their website is so cool. You can look up tons of information, mix and match things. You can take off certain ingredients or add extras of ingredients. I mean, the customizing on there is great. And it gives you that full nutri nutrition breakdown. Again, that exception being the phosphorus that you have to do a little bit more deep diving. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's a really great way to be informed, to make a good decision, and to go there and have a plan of things that you can order and be good with. Yep, fantastic. So what should I be ordering when I go to Taco Bell? And I know I get the wrong tacos. I know it. I just love that crunch. Well, I actually think the crunchy... Uh, the crunchy tortillas or the crunchy shells are yep. a much better offer than the soft shell because awesome. it's lower in sodium. It's so much lower in sodium and they don't typically have phosphate additives in there. The soft tacos, the soft taco shells, that's going to be much higher in sodium and potentially uh, phosphate additives. I always thought they kind of, in their marketing, they portray the soft taco as being the healthier option. So I am very excited to hear that the hard shells are the right ones. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, I think those are really, really great. So um, you can do a few of those and it's super easy and uh, just customize it again. Just figure out what works out best for you and for your nutritional needs. Any yep. kind of taco that you order that is the um, fresco, it has like fresco, taco, yep. whatever. That's what the I get, fresco. no cheese, fresco. Perfect. And, and for some reason, Here's a trick that I found that helped me. Um, I, I mean, I used to eat gigantic meals, family size meals for myself. And then I ordered for everyone else whatever they wanted. Um, so it was hard for me to get used to eating smaller meals, the meals you're supposed to eat. So it wasn't smaller as in I'm eating like a mouse, I was eating like a normal person now. And it just, it was so hard at first, but my secret is hot sauces. I I use hot sauces. It makes the food, it makes me eat it slower. I get mm -hmm. filled faster. And I used to I used to practically cry from a jalapeno. Now I get the hottest sauce and I can I've gotten used to it. I enjoy it. I now understand the flavors between the different sauces. It's not just how hot they are. There is flavor. So that's my secret. I get it al fresco and I get their hottest sauce. Um, and if I ever go to Del Taco, they have a really good hot sauce. Uh, it's made with habanero, habaneros, so it's super hot. And it just takes very little, and I eat it slower. I chew it more, because when you're chewing it, it kind of helps deaden the burn. <laughs> it's gonna sound odd, but it, it makes it not as hot. You get it in there like, woo, and you're chewing, mm -hmm. um, which is all good for you to, to do that. So it helped me eat slower, and eat the right amount and not feel like I was eating like a bird. So that's that that's my secret right there for eating uh, eating tacos. We had a question right here, or well, hold on. So Taco Bell, I'm looking at some stuff here. They also have, and this sounds healthy, a veggie power bowl. Is that a good option, or is this like the the impossible burger where it's just pretending to be good and it's not. Yeah. Uh, this one actually I think is a great option. I would <laughs> recommend that you avoid the cheese and the sour cream to cut down a lot on the sodium, but it is such a good option because it has 10 grams of fiber in that <gasps> oh, bowl. I would love that. Right. Awesome. There's I mean, for most beans, people, veggies, and you're, you're looking at 25 to 30 grams of, of fiber a day, somewhere around there. Your, your, your specific uh, renal dietitian can let you know what your, your targets are. But that right there, that's almost half to a third. It's at least a third, almost mm -hmm. half of your fiber in that one meal. And if you think about it, 
you're only having two or three meals a day, it should be a third to half of the fiber. So that that's like the right amount of fiber. That's why yeah, I love it. I think it's a great option. Yeah. Now we had someone ask, and I don't want to. I don't want to run us too late because I don't know how late you can stay. <laughs> um, I can do about five more minutes. I am. I have a pretty tight schedule. All right, today. we got pizza. What about pizza? What can I do for pizza? Yay, nay. Pizzas are going to be, in some cases, yay, in some cases, nay. <laughs> um, very often we think of them as a no-go because it's high in sodium, it's high in potassium. People forget that a lot of the ingredients on a pizza are high in potassium, like the tomato sauce, the mm -hmm. cheese, certain toppings can be high. And it doesn't really provide a lot of nutritional benefit in a lot of cases, but we can tweak some things to make it a little bit better for us. And one of the places that I like, and it's actually here in my neighborhood, is Pyology. And uh, have you heard of Pyology? Oh, before? wait, I've heard, I visited them once in California. I think, yeah, uh -huh. I think I visited them in Orange County. Oh, you're so in Hawaii. Just, you're way over yeah. there. Yeah, you're on the other coast. They're practically, you're practically yeah. your neighbors. <laughs> it's got that little bit of water between you. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> So Pyology is kind of like the uh, like the Chipotle of pizzas mm -hmm. that you go through the line and you pick out what you want and then they make it for you. They also have a really, really great nutrition calculator on their website and they also have a cauliflower crust. So that is another way to get some more vegetables in, but just be aware that sometimes those specialty crusts can be higher in sodium. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Um, they have a wheat crust that I think is really, really great and all the different toppings and veggies you can add to it are awesome. So my my recommendation is to do like a veggie pizza and cheese, tomato sauce, keep that in mind for yourself and what is recommended for you um, and, and kind of go by that guideline for yourself. But you can, all, you can tweak that to do little, none, extra, whatever it is. Yeah, so I order when we get pizza, it's usually Domino's uh, because I can build it all online and they have a, they have a uh, um, a sauce that's not a sauce. It's an Italian seasoning and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I get it on their their thin crust, which is like a cracker. And I, I love that because I'm not filling up on crust and carbs. And it's, mm -hmm. it's it seems to be fairly low sodium. And they cut it in little squares so I can nibble a little bit. It's not those triangular pieces where I f you actually end up eating more. It's like, oh, right. I'm just gonna have two pieces. I go like, oh, I'm just gonna have three little squares. It's less than a slice. And then I can also get a salad, which they make a lot of really good salads. And again, you can customize it, which I love that. So mm -hmm. I can have me a little bit of a pizza treat. I'm not eating a whole pizza. It's not my entire meal, uh, but I get enough of it to where I get the flavor and I'm, I'm you know, not loading up on the tomato sauce or anything like that. Um, and they have a lot of different cheeses to choose from, which I love, like feta and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, another popular one, and I know you you know some about this one, Papa John's. Any mm -hmm. quick tips about Papa John's? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, my husband actually worked at Papa John's for his high school and a little bit of college. So hey, he would always you go. tell me all the tricks. <laughs> he would tell me, like, <laughs> order this. And we would order a pizza, and he would be able to, like, give all the abbreviations that they had to know what the order was. And I had no idea what he's talking about, but he yeah. did. Um, <laughs> but for Papa John's, I did look at some of their information and they have another good database of nutrition information and the ingredients. I really liked their, surprisingly, their gluten-free crust. Mm. It is really lower in sodium. It's 100 milligrams of sodium, Whoa. which is one of the lowest ones I've seen. So... The Papa John's gluten-free crust, I think, is a great option. And they do the Alfredo sauce, which is a white-based sauce, and that is lower in potassium as well. So that's a way that you can make some tweaks there. Yeah. I also looked at their ingredients. And, you know, Papa John's commercials, they they talk a lot about how, like, fresh, never frozen, or I, I don't know if that's Yeah, better knowledge. ingredients but make they, a better pizza. Yeah, I think that's yeah. their slogan. <laughs> exactly. So I did check their ingredients, and I couldn't find any phosphate preservatives or awesome. in their in their crusts so for their crusts overall they're a better option yep. uh, but like i said the gluten-free one is the lowest in sodium when i was comparing for their meats though their um bacon uh chicken uh, uh philly steak 
meats, those have added phosphates. So you want to be careful with their meats. Of course, it's processed meat. It's to be expected, honestly. Yep. Um, but stick with the veggies, stick with that Alfredo sauce, and that is going to be a better option for you when it comes to a kidney-friendly food. And we're still talking about not all the time. This is an occasional thing every now right. and then. So by combining this to make a healthier choice and limit the frequency, this is really going to be a, an easier way to fit this into your diet. Awesome. Now, I know we're, we're running up out of your time. Um, one last question for you, Jen, and then I'll let you go. And then I'll just answer a bunch of questions that people have asked that I do know the answer to. <laughs> um, if, I, if I'm looking for kidney-friendly restaurants in my area, is there a place I can go, like a, a super list or a, a super search that I can go and find out what what's around me and, and things like we talked about today? Because not everyone can call up a renal dietitian and say, hey, I'm on my way to Long John Silver's. What should I order? Yeah, there is uh, the National Kidney Foundation does make a My Food Coach app mm -hmm. that you can download onto your phone and you can search local restaurants. I don't know how often they keep things up to date and refreshed with what's available, but it could give you some ideas about things that are around you and could be a good option. But you always want to really just go back straight to that restaurant and check directly with them because they don't have to give any kind of announcement with a recipe change, with an mm. ingredient change. They don't have to say anything about that. They might say like new and improved, but yep. they don't have to tell you what that is. And there may or may not be phosphorus or a sodium change or something in there that we aren't aware of. So keep that in mind. And uh, there's also an article that I had uh, posted. And I know you can share my blog link with everybody. Yes, James. let's tell everyone about that real quick. So this does include a, basically a listing of the things that we've talked about today, and there's some other information and links that you can go to to learn even more about uh, different restaurants and potassium phosphorus content. So that, I think, can be really helpful. I also do have on there a free workbook that you can download, so it'll get sent to your email. And it walks you through the steps. What do you like to eat? Where are you going to find the information? What are some of the options? Let's go through and check and make sure that they're kidney friendly. So it's a workbook that helps walk you through how to figure that out. So I yep. hope that you guys try that out and let me know. I'm always, I always love to hear feedback about the things that I provide. So if it works for you, if you have any ideas or suggestions on how to make it better, I'm always open to things like that. But you know, especially if it works for you and you find some great ideas, please let me know and share them. Share them in our Facebook group. Yeah. You know, we talked about that earlier. You can let people know about what you find and maybe others can benefit from it too. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go, Jen. I'm going to stay on, um, answer a few questions, let people know about our upcoming shows because we've We've planned them out into the first week of, of August. It seems like so far away, but it's not. So thank you so much, Jen, for your time today. So appreciate it as always. And Jen will be back here next Tuesday with our next show. And I can't remember what the topic is. It's Mistakes Made Going Plant-Based. I think that's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Some so of can... the most common mistakes that people make when they go plant-based and they have kidney disease. So we're going to talk about some of these things that I've heard over and over again that we just need to clear the air and we need to take care of this once and for all. Yep. All right. Thank you so much, Jen. I'm going to let you go. And I'm going to stay on here and answer some of the, the questions that have been asked in the comments that I do know the answers to. <laughs> All right, great. Well, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to send them to me on my website or in the Facebook group. I still would love to answer them. Uh, just let me know. And James, thank you again for letting me come on here and bug you guys about all this nutrition stuff. Uh, it's <laughs> not bugging us because information is the key to living an amazing life and not letting your kidneys hold you back. So thank you so much for giving us your time. So let me switch the camera over to just me and I'll let you go and you can uh, get on with the rest of the evening. It's actually not even nighttime for her. It's like one o'clock or something in the afternoon. It's Yeah, I have clients to see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're in the middle of your work day. <laughs> yeah. All right, bye, Jen. <laughs> bye, James. Bye, everybody. <laughs>
All right. All right, let me go through. Uh, there's a lot of questions that were asked or that were asked that I can answer, and I'm going to go through those and answer some of those. And Ray had posted a special thanks to all of us for wishing his mom, Muriel, happy birthday. I think he said her birthday is on the 25th. That's just two days away. Um, if you missed it, we showed up. Actually, I can show her picture again. Hold on one second. Um, let's see, where did I put that? There it is. It's her birthday. Happy birthday. Kidney warrior, kicking kidney disease to the curb. She's working on it. Stage five, just got some Rinadil and she's starting it. So let me go through some of these questions that were in there that I do know the answers to, uh, before we, uh, cut this off for the evening. Hold on. Do, do, do so many comments. I love that. Um, I will, a lot of these questions, I will email Jen and try to get answers and post those in the comments below. There's a lot about uh, Chinese, like what about shrimp and broccoli? Some other people asked about shrimp. I'm going to talk to Jen and ask about that. Um, I'm so glad what she said about the hard shell tacos. I was certain I was eating the wrong ones because I just love those. All right, Francis, this question I wanted to definitely get to. According to Google, 1,500 milligrams per day of sodium. I'm guessing that's what it is. I think that's what we were talking about right there. So the amount of sodium, as well as everything else, protein, uh, phosphorus, potassium, calcium. A lot of times you don't hear people talking about calcium. It's another important nutrient for us to keep an eye on. You really got to work with your renal dietitian because you need two numbers. You need to know your minimum. How much do I at least need? Because if you don't get enough sodium, you don't get enough potassium, not enough phosphorus, you've got problems. It's just as bad, sometimes even worse, to not get enough as it is to have too much. So your dietitian, they're gonna look at your labs, where you're at, your lifestyle, your activity level. If you know, you're muscular and you're going out there and you're exercising and riding the bike a lot, your sodium's gonna be higher. Your potassium's probably gonna be higher. But if you have like water retention problems, your stage, you know, low end of stage four, eh, some of those numbers are going to get shrunk even more and be smaller. But you need to find out from your, your renal dietitian what is your minimum sodium and then what's your maximum. And then you just eat to stay in between that. Now, when I first got out of the hospital, um, I, I got out, they had gotten my GFR <laughs> all the way up to 13. Boy, thinking back at that, all the way up to 13 from eight. They almost doubled it, woohoo! But they got me up to eight and stable, and I was on a 1250 milligram of sodium, and you know, salt is not 100% sodium, but I was on that for about the first month, and at that point, I could just eat regular food you know, and get that sodium. And I had a lot of water, fluid retention. My, my shoes didn't fit. My legs were just so swollen. It was unbelievable. Um, but now I eat a lot more sodium. And there is a difference between the types of sodium you pick. Where, what's your source? That, that regular table salt, that salt shaker on your table, you probably just need to throw that away. Chances are that's just processed iodized salt. Um, there's very little nutritional value there. It's that one, the blue bottle with the girl with the umbrella. No, that's the wrong one. Um, like a pink Himalayan sea salt. That's what my doctor recommended. There's a few more trace nutrients that can help us in there. Plus, get it in a, in a grinder. Don't get it in a shaker. Because then you're grinding it, you feel... You, you know, oh, I'm putting more of it on there as you're grinding it and applying the, the salt to your food. Um, but I love the pink Himalayan salt. I love Redmond real salt. It's, it's kind of expensive and it might, it's a little hard to find, but it also has more nutrients in it that are good for us. Just, but if you have a, you know, that regular ionized sea salt or you're out at a restaurant, you see that table salt just sitting there in the shaker. Mm-mm. Don't be using that one. That's just all highly processed. All the goodness is taken away. Let's see what else. There were some questions about Olive Garden. 
Oh, I love Olive Garden, especially right now. They got that buy one, get one. So you they, you you buy up your meal, your whatever it is, your lasagna, and they give you a frozen one that reheats really easy, really well the next day. It's a great value, or at least it seems it to me. Um, but I don't know <laughs> what's the right thing to eat there. Um, whenever we do order Olive Garden, which we have ordered it probably twice in the last six months, I usually get the salad and um, I love the, the the black olives. I get extra black olives and I know olives are high in sodium. Um, I try not to get too many of them too often, um, but I'll ask Jen about Olive Garden because a number of you asked about Olive Garden. Okay, Argyle, is coffee safe? All right. This is a question that comes up quite often. We did touch on it briefly earlier. Brewed coffee, brewed, brewed teas count as water. What you got to be careful with is don't get too much. Usually they consider two cups of coffee a day actually beneficial, not just okay, but actually helpful because a little bit of caffeine that's in there. But you got to be careful of additives. If you're adding sugar, you're adding some kind of syrup, you're adding uh, those non-dairy creamers oh a lot of them are loaded lots of phosphorus in there remember these are chemical phosphorus we're absorbing like 9100 percent of it that natural phosphorus we absorb so little of it donnie asked is sea salt and iodine salt the same um well i don't know the answer to that one i would love to say no but i don't know for sure I get the pink Himalayan sea salts and big crystals and I get to grind it and a grinder seems to last forever. Matter of fact, I had a glass one and my kids dropped it not that long ago, maybe a month ago and broke it. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of salt in there. I, and then I bought a replacement. It was a much smaller one and it's lasting me forever. Let's see. Someone says, oh, here we go. Mike, what's my take on Asian and Indian cuisine? My number one favorite food in the entire world is Indian. Oh, my goodness. First of all, there's lots of vegetarian options, but I also am not a vegetarian. Um, I love me like some butter chicken, some curry chicken, so much flavor. And let me tell you something. I can't get enough naan. <laughs> you have to hold it back from me or else I'll sit there and just eat a whole ton of it. I absolutely love Indian. I also love jasmine rice because it's not loaded with a whole bunch of bad stuff. Um, so I'll eat some jasmine rice. I love Indian also because I can get some really spicy Indian, which caused me to eat it slower and I chew it better and I get fuller. Um, but I absolutely love like super spicy Indian food. I eat so spicy that my eyes are watering. I get the hiccups. <laughs> while I'm eating it, that's when I know this is the right spice level. I start getting the hiccups. <laughs> so I got to always take it to go. Um, we have a couple here in Cincinnati. We had a couple really good Indian buffets. Boy, I just love those because then I could go in there and, and you know, pick and learn what I liked. Uh, let's see. Donnie's asking, what's the best starch to eat? I don't have an answer to that. I, um... Yeah, I don't have an answer for that. And Mike said, thanks for letting us know about Asian and Indian. And then I do love Asian food. I go to, there's a couple of them here. They all know me when I walk in. Panda Express, all the Panda Expresses know me. All of the um, um, the managers know me. I got to meet Tammy and, um, oh, I for, can't, can't for, remember her husband's name, the founders of Panda Express. They live in uh down in Southern California, um, in Pasadena. Awesome, nice people. Very, very focused on health. We just got to be careful. There's a lot of sodium and, and things like that in their, in their food. Um, let me do one more quick, a uh, couple announcements real quick. Um, Jen and I worked out our schedule going all the way through the first week of August. And it is on the homepage of dadvicetv.com. Just go there, scroll down, you'll see all the live shows. This Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern, so it's a different time, it's earlier, uh, and it's on a Saturday, I will have John, the author of Cooking for Your Kidneys, 
awesome guy. Him and I, we had a little chit chat, like, I don't know, hour and a half, two hours or something. Uh, he's also very active in a lot of the Facebook groups. He is, according to his book here, that way I don't miss anything. He was a dialysis. So he had kidney disease, kidney failure, went on dialysis. Um, he's a chef. He owned a restaurant. And now he has a transplant. And he has a YouTube channel. He's starting to make more and more videos to help people. But this book of his, Cooking for His Kidneys, is an awesome cookbook. It's not really just a cookbook. It's so much more than a cookbook. And we'll talk a lot more about that on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern time um, during the, the broadcast. Tons of great recipes. This is where I get my sauces from. People ask, James, where do you make all the sauces that you use? Where do you get your barbecue sauce? Where do you make the different sauces for your stir fry? It's all here in this book. He has the recipes. He talks about substitutions. Here's what you could substitute that for this. Also, and this is what makes this so, so unique. He talks about the science of making the food. And, and really listen to this part. This is going to shock you guys. Did you know, you know, first of all, we all got to be careful with our blood sugar. We know that part. But did you know that when you cook pasta and you eat it, you know, there's a spike in your blood sugar. But if you cook pasta, you throw it in the fridge, let it get cold. Then the next day, you get it out. You put it in the microwave and heat it up in the microwave. You know, it doesn't take very long. Pasta heats up really, really quick. You will actually have a lower spike in your blood sugar because there's a chemical reaction that happens in the pasta as it's cooling down and then you reheat it and he talks about that and so many other cool things so you may think oh i can't have pasta because first of all you know that was one of the things i was afraid of pasta i gotta lose weight i gotta watch my carbs i gotta you know stick very low carb diet um, I, I don't have to worry about my blood sugar right now, but I did at one point, so I completely avoided all pasta. But that's one way to make pasta fit in your diet. So it's really cool when you learn all these tricks, you can make so much more fit in your diet. And instead of diet meaning no, 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 it just means, hey, here's how we're gonna make it, and we're all gonna enjoy it. And I've made the pasta the way he says, can't tell a difference that it was cooked yesterday, spent the night in the refrigerator, and then got reheated the next day. He's got all sorts of nutritional information. Um, there, you can find his book on Amazon. I'll throw a, a link in the description of this video too when I'm done uh, recording this tonight when I publish. Uh, that way you have it. Cooking for your kidneys. John Vito, great guy. He's a kidney warrior. We got to support him. Fantastic. And this book is heavy too. His page is so thick, a lot of color things. He also, he has professionals take the pictures of his food and look at that. Awesome looking. Great stuff. Great recipes. Easy to follow. He's doing videos and hopefully going to do even more. And I think he might become a regular. We'll do a lot of shows with him to talk about all sorts of stuff and cooking for your kidneys. Let's see. Did I get everything? We got that show coming up. Sign up for the newsletter. First one comes out this Thursday. So go to go.dadvicetv.com slash newsletter, sign up. Um, I partnered with the makers of Renadale and they're they're paying for the whole cost to create the newsletter because none of that stuff's free. Um, sending those out, you kind of think like, oh, it should be free. No, the companies that do it, you know, they're, they gotta make some money so they charge for it. But Kiva Biotech's taking care of that. Jen created, I think it's either four or five articles for the first newsletter. I've got some stuff in there about summer. Um, matter of fact, let me just throw that a little bit of information on here. It is summer. Summer's coming real quick. You guys got to remember sunscreen. Be careful. Not all sunscreens are the same. You know, you, you read deodorant. It's got a kidney warning, but it's only if you eat the deodorant. Hopefully you're not eating it. Um, the aluminum is not enough to cause any problems for kidney pages, but they're required to put it on there. But when it comes to sunscreen, there is a difference. You're rubbing this in. It's getting absorbed into your skin. So you got to be careful not to get one with a lot of different chemicals. This is the one I use. It's copper tone, pure and simple, hyperallergenic and gentle. It's a long name. Uh, it happens to be a 50 because 
I'm very pale. Let's, you know, I got freckles. I got some red hair. I burn easy. Uh, but this right here, it's a zinc oxide based. So the zinc is actually good for you. Uh, there's a lot of research saying that zinc may be just as important as iron for kidney patients. So this is the zinc oxide. Anything you rub on your skin, all those other chemicals, the other sunscreens, it's absorbing into your bloodstream. Part of it's getting there, and then your kidneys have got to remove that. I actually got sick last year. I was feeling just so bad, like, ugh. And I went to my doctor, and it was the sunscreen that I was using. It had a chemical in there that helps you darken faster, so you get that that better tan. Um, and I stopped it, and the like maybe a day and a half, two days later, that sickness just went away. And then I tried it again a couple weeks. Ugh, felt bad. Just a handful of hours, like half a day after putting it back on. But since then, I've used this Copper Tone Pure and Simple, all natural ingredients. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Target. Oh, here's another bonus. This is like the cheapest sunscreen you can buy. Not even expensive. That's great. Some of that sunscreen is so outrageously overpriced. All right. So, um, I think that's all the announcements I wanted to make before wrapping up for the evening. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. It was great. Love seeing all the comments. I'm going to talk to Jen about a lot of the questions that we didn't get to ask. We always get lots and lots of questions during these. The link, let me make sure it's up here on the screen again for her blog. The blog, everything we covered, she's adding stuff that wasn't in there that we talked about. It's all in there. There's even more stuff in there about other types of restaurants. And she's got her workbook that you can download that's going to help you and figure out where to eat out. When it comes to fast food, you don't have to avoid it or be afraid of it. You're just making an occasional treat to yourself. And oh, he says, I can't believe I missed this again. <laughs> Don't worry, Eve, you can catch the replay. And and Jen had a, a very tight schedule today, and she had to go about 10 after 7. Uh, so she wasn't available to answer as many questions. I knew this was going to be a big topic. There's just so many fast food places out there. But thank you all for watching. I really appreciate this. If you haven't subscribed, make sure and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Almost at today, we will hit 80,000 subscribers, probably about an hour or so from now. Uh, can't wait to hit 100,000 subscribers. When that happens, YouTube sends me some silver thing and I'll add it up there in the back, boop, up there on the wall. There's a great space right there to put it. Got my picture right there that I got uh, from Brianna, the living kidney donor that we talked about. Uh, Carmen says, James, what's your GFR? Here's the bad news. I haven't gotten it tested again since last January, and it was 33. I've continued to take my Renadil every day. I've continued to stick to my diet pretty good. I know I'm eating at least healthy, but my portions are on the healthy portion side, and I'm gaining a little bit of weight, so I got to lose some weight with summer being here. Uh, but I don't know where my GFR is. I have absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. I have tons of energy. When it's not too hot outside, I can get five, six miles in, in a walk slash jog, no problem. I couldn't do that before. I, even before my kidney problems, I was so overweight, I couldn't do that. So I'm still, you know, getting better. Now my kidneys, they're, they're never gonna heal themselves. There's no fix in my kidneys. So it, I'm not sure how much better I will be able to get them, but I'm at a point right now, my doctor says, James, you're good. You're holding. You can do this for the rest of your life and not have to worry about dialysis. So I am completely happy where I am, happy to not have any symptoms, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna see what else there is. And you know, maybe there's something else that comes along. And I am not 100% plant-based. I know if I did go 100% plant-based, that would be the right thing to do. And that would help me even more. It's just uh, kind of hard to, to completely give up some chicken here and there. Um, Hellman asks, kidneys can never heal. That is correct. So in your kidneys, you have two problems that happen. You have all your blood vessels. Those pretty much get damaged and there's scar tissue. 
And those blood vessels need to be there because the bad stuff gets kind of pushed, absorbed, and 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 pushed through through those in certain areas. Some groups of the blood vessels, they look like a big old blob of stuff. They're called nephrons. Those push the bad stuff through. Your blood pressure is actually what makes it happen. Push the bad stuff uh, through. Some good stuff goes through, but it gets reabsorbed within your kidneys. But once you've damaged your kidneys, currently there is no way to physically repair the damage. What you can do and what I have done to get me from a GFR of eight to a GFR of 33 and hopefully even higher, feeling great with no symptoms, is you can reduce the burden you place on your kidneys. So you're not eating too much potassium, phosphorus. You're watching the sources and mount of your protein. Eat animal protein, pH balance, acid, boom, going off the charts. Uh, it causes uh, hyperfiltration in your kidneys, which causes more stress, which could cause inflammation. And then you're leaking protein. We don't want to do that. Um, a lot of times when you get your urine test, they're looking for the amount of protein. And if you can reduce inflammation, you may see the amount of protein you're leaking reduce. Mine is zero. It used to be a lot. Then I got on a low inflammation diet. It went down a lot, but not all the way. And then I discovered I have an allergy to soy. I love soy. I can eat soy. I see no physical problems, but I get inflammation and my kidneys are one of the things that get inflamed by eating soy. So I now avoid soy. I am not leaking any protein in my urine, which is fantastic. But we cannot physically repair our kidneys with current medical science. Now, hopefully there's some other alternatives to dialysis coming down the road. All right, guys, I need to go because I got to order dinner and we've just been talking about food and getting all hungry. <laughs> so please join Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So it's a little bit earlier. Hopefully it's a good time. And um, every Tuesday, Jen and I are here. We got our new schedule up on dadvicetv.com all the way through the first week of August. If you have suggestions, let me know. Someone had mentioned, I think I think Chris earlier said, James, exercise. Could someone talk about exercise? I have someone who is a professional who I'm working to schedule to get on and do a show all about exercise and kidney disease. So go ahead. Let me know. What would you like to hear us talk about? The channel's getting so big, I can now reach out to these people and say, hey, look, we got 80,000 subscribers. You know, lots of people are watching them. They're sharing the videos. Come on on and talk to people. Let's get the news out there. The more you know, the better it is for you and the easier it is for you to kick kidney disease to the curb and improve your kidney health. I really, I'm trying to get away from saying the word kidney disease because yeah, we got the disease, but what we're really focused on now is our kidney health. And then Jen has a huge announcement coming. It's a very good announcement very, very soon. Um, so keep an eye. I'm, I think she might announce it next week. So make sure and tune in. If you know anybody has kidney disease, please share the video. <laughs> I, I got to go ahead and end this or I'm going to ramble on forever. <laughs> Thanks everybody. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your week.